Right lads, ye are the CIA down under. We sure are. S Central Injection Agri. Yes. Better, better known as uh, better known as Slurry Tom, but also known as the CIA, the manure connoisseur. <laughs> we, we get a lot of poo moved very quickly. Yeah, that's better. That's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, my name's Tom. This is my eldest boy Flynn. Uh, we operate in Pleasant Point, South Canterbury, but we basically drive everywhere that people ring up and hire us. We go down to Amaru. We were up past Christchurch, Rangiora, Oxford, and from them there hills down to the coast. So we cover a vast area. And basically this machine is our main slurry machine. This is your bread and butter basically, this, this is machine. The bread, this is the baby that pays the bills most of the time. Uh, it's a Venhouse Rotomax, originally from Holland. It has a 12 meter wide implement on the back with 60 steel discs and each one is individually fed through two macerators 15 pipes 60 in total and that blasts the slurry down into the ground that the steel discs have cut a slot and therefore injects it into the ground and as you can see across the paddock we just done yesterday We've done 1700 cube in 12 hours. No smell, no mess, no leaching. You can't even smell the slurry that's here. The neighbours love it, farmers love it. All the NDP in the caves in the ground, nitrogen, potassium, potash. And this ground here has always been cropping ground. It's just new grass, new pivot, six weeks, they'll be harvesting uh, bales or silage off that and no first is needed. And that's twenty, thirty thousand dollars he saved immediately. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's the bottom dollar. That's what makes the dairy farm work. And since the cows have given the slurry for nothing, he's he's using it. Yeah, yeah. And the fact is, we are one point five k from the pond to here. There's no issues with compaction. We've ran across cow lanes, across water ditches, under trees under hedges to get here takes quite a bit of time to set it up but the beauty about it is once we're finished we pick up our pipes there's no damage anywhere and there's no compaction problems the cow lanes over here are all clay and lime no damage so therefore he doesn't have to repair them afterwards which I've seen with some jobs because over here a lot of contractors buy massive tractors and tankers like 30 35,000 liter tankers Big. it's normal enough to see like 5,000 gallon 6,000 gallon tanks over here isn't it like yes it is the norm and big trail and shoes hanging off the back of them and oh look 60 70 ton gross weight like the pond we're at now 4,000 cube you multiply that by 30 you know that's a hundred loads plus higher us job's done and there's no after cost yeah and because this machine puts the slurry in the ground the farmers wives love it as well because we often do work near the farm homes they can hang out their washing there's no smell <laughs> the clothes <laughs> smell like they just come out of the washing machine <laughs> and um yeah happy wife, that's your, happy that's your best sales pitch is it oh, I tell you, <laughs> keep the wife um, happy <laughs> yeah well, right, Tom, you're originally from Limerick. I sure am. How yeah. did you end up out here now? Is there not enough story at home for you? I'll be here 20 years in September. Um, the Celtic boom was absolutely flying at the time, all three. And I'd been over here for two years. My father said to me, look, he goes, if you've got work there, he goes, stay there. Because things are crashing here big time. Like Things are not good. So I did. Met a lovely lady called Sandra. And... We worked on a few places around the place together and then started thinking, right lads, I've made millions of dollars for everyone I've ever worked for. Time to do something myself now. And notice very quickly, all the big contractors, they all done silage, cultivation, diggers, bulldozers. No one done slurry. And I approached the big contractors are on point, Tamuka, you know, Timaru, and said to them, well, 
would you have a problem? What do you think of me doing slurry? And they said, do it. We do not want to do it because we can't get lads to do even what we have. So I approached the bank and then uh, family friends helped me out with money, got me going, approached UDC, ANZ and bought this tractor. We kicked off and I was a weekend warrior spreading slurry, pumping slurry everywhere. And Flynn used to come with me on the weekends, giving me a hand, learning, teaching what to do. Just like today. Just like today. <laughs> and then July 19, Quigley Contracting put in the local farm machinery magazine, slurry equipment, slurry run for sale. And I looked at it and thought, oh yeah, this could be interesting. Made the deal happen. First of September, bought all the effluent stuff off Quigley Contracting. This Venn house, the big slurry pumps, all their stirrers, the tanks, everything. And um, we were away. That was it. We were running. And it's now basically <laughs> nearly four years and we haven't stopped. It's been great. Busy, crazy, big hours. And what else then do you have in the fleet? You have this 7250, John Deere. 7250R, I've got a Case 165 Ultimus, which is a fantastic machine. It runs the Excel, the smoke spreader, the tanker, all my stirrers, and it pulls trailers, 20 ton trailers, no problem. And then back at the pump, I've got a big Deitzvar 9340, and that works all day. It just sits there and it just grinds that pump. And it is amazing fuel efficient. I've had tractors leading up to getting that dites. I've had cases, fence, optums, magnums, big fence, microchip tractors, seven in total, ranging from 45 liters an hour down to 26, 27, that case Magnum 340, that was good. But none of them had 1000 E economy, whereas that Deitz had a 1000 E economy. And we basically went from using 45 liters an hour down to 21. So it was just a no brainer. Bought the tractor through power farming. And basically every day that tractor saved me two and three hundred dollars of two and three hundred liters of diesel every day. So uh, yes, it was an expensive purchase, but fuel efficiency is paid for itself. I've had it two years now, and yeah, it's a no-brainer. We fill it once a day, keep it topped up, but we only fill our fuel tanker, which holds 1,500 litres every three to four days. And that's it. Yeah, so you have no, um, no allegiance to any brand at the minute, but would you go for Deitz again if you're looking for another tractor or changing? Yes. Uh, I must say, I haven't had a new Warrior out on demo yet, but I wouldn't say no to it because to be Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, like. Hey? Hint, hint, yeah, nudge, yeah, nudge, if yeah. anyone's watching. Like. Yeah, yeah, all right, Tom. <laughs> 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 so, um, to be fair, the Deitz, to me, for fuel efficiency, can't be touched. Forgot to ask you about the pump in the yard. Yes. So it's a pump, but it has a tank on it. So basically what it is, is a BX1000 centrifugal pump and that drives the slurry to this Vinhouse Rotor Max. But there's two different compartments in it. One compartment holds 7,000 litres, which is like my reservoir. And then the other side holds 6,000 litres of water, which we flush out the machine with from time to time. It's good. And when you're finished pumping in, you want to clear out the pipe. You don't use a sponge, you just blow air through it. Yeah, I've got a big, big compressor sitting on the back of the Quadro pump. And we turn it on, let it build up to 7 bar. And then she'll keep on generating pressure. And I can tell by the gauges in the machine and the cab when the pipeline's getting pressurised. And I'll then open the machine and she'll literally pump the slurry all the ways until the very end and there's a massive air explosion out the back and it literally cleans the whole system out 
I've never used a sponge bowl. Um, never had to. This machine talks to that machine and vice versa. And modern technology is just fantastic. I'm not the most technical person, but I've got my head around it and it works. Behind the Starotomax, you were saying that's 06? Can yeah, it was constructed it? in 07. I think there's about 30 Rotomaxes in the world. There's two here in New Zealand. I've got one. Herbert Transport on in Cargo. They've got the second. And I'm really good friends with um, Scott down there. And um, we talk all the time about upgrading and pipes and spare parts and bits and pieces and how we make things work. And um, it's good to have someone like that to talk to because uh, it's very hard to ring Holland at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> when people are asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's just the way it is, you know? We make it work. To sum it up anyway, you're out here, you're making a fortune, you're, uh, having, a, you're no. having a good time. <laughs> We're not making a fortune, we're paying bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no. you've plenty of room for more customers. Yeah, no, when we started, we went big, took on a lot of finance, and um, yeah, we're making it work. But, you know, 70, 80 hours a week, a lot of work, a lot of driving, good staff, when they turn up, when they're here, and um, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I couldn't have done this in Ireland, nah, not a hope of it. Just different attitude over here, Kiwis are, Always helpful, grateful. They say, oh yeah, get on, get do it. It's a good job. You need a hand, give us a shout. That's it. You'll never, never, never hear a Kiwi saying, oh, don't do that because it ain't going to happen. You know, the biggest thing I've regretted is not doing something myself 10 years ago. Not just four years ago. But, you know, we all follow our life paths and this is where I'm at. Got a missus and four kids and cats and dogs and mortgage and <laughs> business. And um, when I left Ireland in 03, there was nothing on the radar. Just a backpack and 500 euro in my back pocket and that was it. Didn't know. That's life. Yeah. That's it. All right, Tom. Thanks very much. No worries.